So for the last uh, few weeks, you know, I, I had COVID, and it, it the first onset wasn't that bad. It's the after effects, tired and all that nonsense. And my voice still hadn't come back. So I had a buddy of mine that was watching um, after we put last week's service on YouTube, sends me a message. He's a real good guy. Uh, he said, man, you don't need to be singing. He said, you need to back up as far away from that microphone as you can get. He said, that was horrible. I said, well, I appreciate that. You know, it's it's little things in life that make you appreciate your friends. And he, what are you laughing about? And he said, he said, well, it ain't that it was that bad. He said, no, come, come think of it. It's pretty bad. So I apologize if it was that bad. And uh, this week it probably ain't going to be a whole lot different. But you know what, buddy, if you're watching, mm-hmm. I'll talk to you later. Well, God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, burning bush, burning bush. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush, saying, I'm the Lord thy God. Take your shoes off, Moses, you're on holy. Well, Jamie, there will be one person's happy that you're back singing and playing this morning, and that's my mother. Because she asked last Sunday, when I called her, she said, where's Jamie been the last two Sundays? And I said, well, he's been sick. She says, well, I miss him playing the guitar and singing. So she'll be happy that you're playing the guitar and singing today. That's why she listens every Sunday, not to hear her son preach, but to hear, to hear you preach play the guitar and sing. And I guess when she passes from this earth, we're going to have to figure a way to get you to South Carolina to play the guitar and sing. So, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Numbers chapter 13. We're going to begin with the 26th verse and read through the 14th chapter of verse 9. They, being the twelve spies, came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran, and they reported to them and the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We saw descendants of Anak there, and the, Am and the Malachites live in the Negev. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live in the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in and the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim. They were the descendants of Anak from the Nephilim. 
we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If we had only died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and our children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell down, face down, in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. And Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of these people of the land, because he will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, remember all those on our prayer list. Uh, of course, Buster is still having huge issues with his back. Miss Joe, Ray and Mickey, and Ray is coming home. Uh, Logan Jewell, Ricky Holcomb is at home dealing with COVID issues. Uh, Ricky Jones, we're glad to see Rick here this morning. Gina. Good to see her here this morning. Johnny and Betty are both here. Uh, Brenda, good to see you here. Lanny, good to see you back there. Uh, Marvin is continuing to recover from a broken leg. Uh, 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 Jamie talked to you about Carl and Lisa. Good to see you here. And many, many, many names on the family and friend list. So let's remember all those people. Let's pray. <coughs> Lord, thank you so much that we could come and worship on such a beautiful day today. And Lord, we thank you so much that soon we'll be able to return to our church house. And we pray that the COVID numbers continue to fall so that we can go back there. And Lord, we know that uh, some of our family here today have lost loved ones this week. And we ask that you would comfort all of those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We continue to to pray for our students who are in school, that you would protect them and keep them safe. And Lord, we pray for this community, for those who are lost in this community, that you would give us a burning desire to reach out and, and teach them about Jesus. We thank you for the many children who are coming on Wednesday nights for our Wednesday night blast and for all their leaders. We, we thank you for yesterday, for the taco Jesus that we had here yesterday and for the many young people and children who came yesterday and for their leaders who taught them about Jesus here yesterday. What a, what a great day we had here yesterday. Thank you for that. And Lord, we just continue to pray for this church and its ministries here in the Franklin community. We, we thank you today that we can come and hear your word and we pray now that you'd open our eyes, our hearts, and our ears that we would be receptive to what you want us to do right here in Franklinton. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me tell you about yesterday. Uh, the, the children and youth committees, they had a thing called Taco Jesus. Taco what? Talk about Jesus. T-A-C-O about Jesus. Taco. They had tacos and they had some activities here. They had 17 youth and children here yesterday. And they started at 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I think. And they went all day long from 2 to 7. And they had a blast here with the kids in the neighborhood and from Eastern. And they just had a great day here. Our children and youth, the, the, the girls who are teaching our children and youth, they are doing an outstanding job on Wednesday night. They had 25 youth and children here Wednesday night. And they're just doing a great job with our children and our youth. And you need to be thankful for 
for those who are working with our kids and our youth. It's uh, They're just doing a tremendous job, and I'm appreciative of Sheila. Sheila is an outstanding director in that area. She's got things planned all the way through the end of the year, different things, her and Can Dance and Ebony and a Megan. Uh, they're just doing a, a tremendous job along with Dorothy. Um, so you be praying for them and give them a helping hand when they ask for it. Uh, it's just a tremendous thing that they're doing with those kids. Um, they love them to death. And uh, uh, one of the little girls this morning uh, asked uh, Can Dance if she'd bring some stuff and help her fix her hair. So Can Dance came in with all kind of stuff to fix her hair this morning. And that little girl's beautiful. She came up and showed me her hair this morning. So uh, they're doing going far beyond what they have to do. And uh, it's great when I can see our teachers going beyond what they need to do to love our kids. So you, you give those girls all the support you can give them. I'm so appreciative of them. Great day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Jamie. <clears throat> Well, the guy I was talking about earlier, if he sees this one, he's probably going to give me a hard time, too. This was the song I was going to do way back when I had to fill in for Jackie, uh, when we kind of started this Moving Forward series. And I was going to sing this song, and it's really high, and it's not going to be good, but listen to the words of it, and don't run. Lanny, lock that door back here. <clears throat> my life I 
life today, many people appear to be standing in the same place. They're not progressing, they're not moving forward or achieving. They're not moving for reasons such as not wanting to change, not willing to put forth any effort, not willing to face opposition, no aspirations, dreams, or visions. As a result, they're wandering in the wilderness, a failure. Moses sends 12 spies. To a land flowing with milk and honey. They spend 40 days among the enemy. They return. Notice they spend 40 days among the enemy. Not a hair on their head is harmed. And they report back to Moses and Aaron. Ten say, we can't do it. Too dangerous. They're too big. We're like grasshoppers among giants. Caleb and Joshua's like, let's go. Man. You won't believe this place. Great pasture land, fruit like you wouldn't believe. It's going to be easy. Remember what God said? He said, it's yours for the taking. Let's go. Pack up your mules. Pack up your tents, tell the wife and kids, we're ready to go tonight. The other ten said, are you crazy? Did you see the size of those people? told our Sunday school class this morning they must be Baptist because if you look in verse 32 these 10 spies after Caleb and Joshua say let's go we can do it look at verse 32 and they spread among them what? Bad rumors. Bad rumors. I'll get to that in a minute. Go to 
God makes his promises. God had made them the promise. This is yours. I'm going to give it to you. I started to do something this morning. I thought it might be just so awkward to you that you wouldn't understand it and some of you would walk out. But I started to bring Jamie up here and present him with a gift from the church. And then Jamie just look at it and say, I don't want this. And just throw it. (laughs) And just throw it down and walk out. Just be rude about it. And then I thought some of you just couldn't handle that. (laughs) But God gave them a gift. He says, this is yours. It's yours for the taking. I promise to give this to you. God had delivered them out of Egypt after 400 years of slavery and bondage. He had walked. Now, this is what I can't fathom. There were 603,500 men over the age of 20, not counting the Levites who were priests. And there's at least 20,000 of them. He had delivered over 600,000 men over the age of 20. You figured they were married, plus they at least had a couple of kids apiece. So there were three to four million people. He had delivered all these people out of Egypt on one night, walked through the Red Sea on dry land in one night. That's about the size of Los Angeles. They had all seen and witnessed this miracle, plus all the other miracles that took place in the desert. I know they they were Jews. I know they were Hebrews. But they were also... They had a Baptist gene that ran right through them because they griped and complained all the time. You remember they got tired of eating manna? So they griped. They wanted meat. God gave them quail. They they griped all the time. They seen miracle after miracle after miracle. I, I can't imagine Moses. I, it's, I just I can't get it through my little brain how all this took place. All these people, how he communicated with them, how he kept them together. Can you imagine all the teenagers that must have been in that crowd? Can you imagine, Jamie, can you imagine dealing with all those teenagers? Can you imagine them with all those women? I mean, how do you... And you had animals. You had livestock. You had to feed all these people. You... I mean, this was a tremendous task. And they had seen miracle after miracle after miracle. And now they get to where God, the land that God had promised to give it to them, and all they had to do is walk in in there. And we say, well, how stupid. But let me put it in 2022 language. 
God says, give your life to me and I will give you eternal life. It's tough to do, isn't it? I'll give you my heart, Lord, but but I want to live my life the way I want to live it. <coughs> God says, give me your life and I'll rescue you from drugs and alcohol. God says, you can have this job or you can have a financial breakthrough if you'll just learn how to trust me in giving me your tithe. Ooh. You can have peace if you'll just surrender to me. We keep saying, no. No, I want to do it my way. I want to look at four things. Look at the despair. The entire community wept aloud. When the report came back, they said, we can't do this. We can't do this. They wept aloud. We can't do this. Whole assembly said, if we had only died in Egypt or in the wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land? to let us fall by the sword. Our wives and children were taking us in plunder. Wouldn't it have been better for us to have gone back to Egypt? They began to cry out. Despair. They began to cry out. All of them. Joshua and Caleb disagreed. Majority rules. Majority rule. No matter what God says, the majority rules. You know, I think back often about this building. And I know I use it as a lot. It's an, it's an example. But many years ago when we voted on this building, this building passed by two votes. Majority rules, right? I want you to think where we would be if we had not built this building. fathom to think where we would be. Things we would not have been able to do. I think we'd have still been across the street struggling. Programs we could not have offered. Ministries we couldn't do for children. Dinners we couldn't have, suppers we couldn't have. I think we'd still been floundering around with 40 or 50 people. You see, they began to mumble and grumble and complain. 
they spend all their energy in wanting to go backwards instead of putting their energy in going forward. You know what COVID has caused churches to do the last two years? Churches have put all their energy in going backwards instead of going forward. When Jamie and Becky and I met three or four weeks ago, we decided we're not going to go backwards anymore. We're not going to talk about COVID and what it's doing to us. We're going to move forward. And that's what we're going to do from now on. We're not worried about the people who aren't here. We're going to minister to the people who are here. We're not going to talk about who isn't here and why they're not here. We're going to move forward. We're going to start moving forward and ministering to those of you who are here. If you want to come along and go with us, fine. If you want to stay and lag behind, that's okay. But we're going to move forward. We spend too much energy moving backward and not enough energy moving forward. These people were talking about going backward. If we hadn't have left Egypt, maybe we need to go backward. We need to go back to where we came from. Do you know what they had been doing for 400 years? Making bricks and slavery. And now they were looking to going back. We need to get rid of Moses and Aaron. We need to elect us a new leader. Maybe we need a new God. We need to go back to what we were doing. We were better off then than we are now. How ridiculous. How ridiculous. They were spending all of their energy looking backwards. Have you ever watched someone and you or encouraged them to get an education or learn a trade or earn a degree so they can move forward and all they want to talk about is it's too hard? It costs too much money. It's too hard. And all they want to do is just spin their wheels where they are and they continue to go backwards instead of go forward. You see, in life, we need to be moving forward. We need dreams. We need aspirations. We need goals. And too many people never set those goals. They never work f toward moving forward. Reason number two. Look at the division among the people. There was lack of harmony and there was disagreement. The grumbling and unbelief of the peoples emphasized that all the people, all the Israelites, the whole assembly, every adult was grumbling in unbelief. Every one of them, unbelief. They were raising their voices, they were weeping, they were wailing, they were screaming. They were throwing, they were cursing against Moses and, and, and Aaron. The people felt that death in Egypt or the desert was better than going into the promised land. I've seen it in churches before. The pastor's not on the same page as the deacons, causes division. Deacons don't get their way, or the pastor doesn't get his way. And so they begin to mumble and grumble against one another. Thank God in the 22 years that we've been here, we haven't had that issue in this church. We always need to be on the same page, the leadership. The church members need to be on the same page as the leadership. We always need to trust in God. We always need to be moving forward together as a church, as God leads us. God needs to be the head. We need to pray to him and we need to trust in him and the pastor needs to trust in God and the people need to trust in the pastor and the deacons needs to trust in the pastor and the people need to trust in the deacons and we need to always move forward. Moses was their leader. And all of a sudden, the leader that they had trusted in to lead them from out of Egypt and across the Red Sea and through the desert, all of a sudden now, they didn't trust in him. And they turned their backs. There were doubters. 
They doubted God. When we doubt God, we're in serious, serious trouble. The spies spread an evil report among the people. They exaggerated, they distorted the truth. The worst thing that can happen in any church is rumors. Rumors. Half truths to get our way. They become stumbling blocks. Stumbling blocks to children, stumbling blocks to church members. Scripture is clear we're not to be stumbling blocks. 1 Corinthians 8 9 says, Be careful, however, that it is the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. I hate rumors. I hate rumors worse than anything in the world. I got a call not too long ago about a rumor here in this church. I called the person, I said, Is this true? He said, Jackie, that's a half truth. That's a half truth. We had part of that conversation, but that's not the way it that's not the way it went. Let me tell you something. Don't you start a rumor in this church. Don't you start a half truth in this church. I hate rumors. There's no reason to start a rumor. If you've got something you want to know, you come and ask me. I'll tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. No reason to start a division in this church or any other church. Rumors will tear up a church quicker than anything else I know of. All they do is cause division. And that caused division here. These ten spies wanted their way. Joshua and Caleb says, we can take this land. God promised it to us. It's flowing with milk and honey. It's like we said, we can go and take it. These ten spies says, no, we can't. But to make sure they got their way, they go throughout the entire village. They begin to spread rumors. Listen, listen. You, you, you're not going to believe the size of these people. They're, they're bigger than grasshoppers and the cities are fortified. And there is just no way with, that we can go. Proverbs 29, 25 says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts the Lord is kept safe. God will keep us safe. We don't have to fear man. When you're strong and courageous, there will be no doubt. God will say go, and you won't have to say no. Look at reason number four is the decision. Decision means to make one's mind up and show resolution. Joshua and Caleb said, let's go. But the Israelites, all 603,500 said, no. No, we're not going to go. We want to go back. We want to go back to where we came from. We want to elect new leaders. We don't even want a new God. We don't trust the God that says you can go into that promised land and take it. We want to go back. God became so angry. He says, I'm going to let you go back, all right? I'm going to let you go back in that desert that you came from. I'm going to let you wander there for 40 years. And you can wander there till you die. I'm going to cause all kind of sickness to come to your generation. And every single one of you are going to die. And the only two that's going to inherit the promised land is going to be Joshua and Caleb. God gave them a promise. When they left Egypt, he gave them a promise. You will inherit a promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
I will give you the very best. I will give you the best land. I will give you all that you need. I will give you protection. There is nothing that you will have to do. You will not have to fight for it. All you have to do is inherit it. Inherit. What does inherit mean? I will give it to you. I'm going to give you an inheritance. It is given to you. that they refuse to believe God's promise. Hmm. So God says, I'll give you what you want. You don't want to take it? I'll give you what you want. You want to go back to Egypt? I'll turn you back around. I'll turn you back into the desert. For 40 days you spent in that promised land, I kept you, those 10 spies, I kept you safe. You were able to eat of the fruit of the land. You were able to be protected by my protection, not a hair on your head harmed. But I'll let you go back into that desert. You'll wander for 40 years until every one of you die off. Sure enough, that's what happened. Not a one inherited promised land. Folks, God makes us promises. He makes us promises. He asks for things from us and he expects from us. Do you fulfill your promises to him? Let me read something to you. We are a mere, will a mere mortal rob God? Let you rob me. And you ask, how are you robbing me? In tithes and offerings? You're under a curse, your whole nation, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that you may have food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour open such blessings that there will not be room in the storehouse to store it. You see, that's just one thing God asks. God asks for a tithe. Do we do that? Do we do that? God asks us to spend time in prayer. Do we do that? God asks us to spend time in this book. Do we do that? God asks us to give us his heart. Do we do that? We've talked through this book of Joshua about giving him all that we have. Do we do that? Last week we talked about holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. You see, God makes demands from us just like he made demands from these people. And we think we can thumb our nose at God and get away with it. It doesn't work that way. It didn't work that way for the Hebrew children. It doesn't work that way for us. In the book of James, it says, We have not because we ask not. We are blessed when we give. We are blessed when we spend time with God. We are blessed when we ask. 
How can God bless us when we never spend time in prayer? When can, how can we be blessed when we never read his word? How can we be blessed when we never spend time on holy ground? The Hebrew children paid because they turned their back on God. And many of us think we can show up for 30 minutes on Sunday morning and listen to a preacher preach a sermon or show up for two hours on Sunday morning for Sunday school and, and, and hear a sermon and think God's going to bless us. It doesn't work that way. The scripture says, the tithe is mine. God demands that. He demands that. The best advice I ever received in my life is this, and I'm going to give it to you today. You can take it or, or not. This is why we're in trouble today in this country. When I was in college, I had a Bible professor, and he said, I'm going to give you some advice it's young people. And he says, this best advice I can ever give you, and you take it. He says, when you're my age, and he was about my age now, he says, you'll be a rich person. He says, when you get your paycheck, you need to, this is what you need to do with it. He said, you need to take 10% and give to the Lord, another 10% and put in savings, and you live on 80%. If you'll do that, you'll be one of the richest people in the nation. I took some of that advice. I've always given 10% to the Lord. My whole life I've tithed. I wish I'd put 10% away for savings. Most of us are in debt because we never have learned to live on 8%, have we? 10% of what we make belongs to the Lord. It's not ours. It's God's. And God's going to get it one way or the other. And I've been blessed because God has always blessed me. I've been blessed because I spend time in prayer. I know what it is to ask God, and I know what God can do through prayer. And some of you know what I'm talking about. I know what it is to be on holy ground each and every day. Now, I can't get on my knees. But there's been many times I've come up against impossible odds. And God says, I'll make a way. Your enemy may be bigger and stronger, but I'll make a way. This old boy should have been dead many, many times. But he's still here. I'll make a way. This building shouldn't be here, but it's here. I'll make a way. Those church doors should have closed many years ago, but Lord, I'll make a way. Deacons have prayed. Some of you have seen miracle after miracle in your own life. I'll make a way because you've been on holy ground on your knees praying. I'll make a way. God says, prove me. Joshua and Caleb said, it's impossible, but all things through God are possible. God said he 
He said he'd give it to us. I ain't going to call God a liar. It's possible. If you're not tithing today, you know what you're doing? Call God a liar. You're saying God can't do what he says he can do. If you're not praying and you're not asking God for things, you're calling God a liar. You're saying he can't do what he says he can do. These ten spies are saying, God, you can't do what you promised us you could do. Caleb and Joshua are saying, let's go. Some of you are saying, I don't want the best that God has for me because he can't do it anyway. I can't have it all that I deserve because God can't do it anyway. I can't have my financial breakthrough because God can't do it anyway. I can't be healed because God can't do it anyway. I can't be blessed by the best because God can't do it anyway. I can't have a new job because God can't do that anyway. I can't have a new job or a new home or a new church or a new attitude or a new way of thinking because God can't do those things. I don't believe God can do any of that. Is that your mindset? Not Joshua's, not Caleb's, not mine. I believe that all things are possible through Christ Jesus. And I believe you think that way too. Joshua and Caleb said, round them up, move them out, let's go. But the other says, no, nope. we're going backwards. We want to go back to where we came from. We want to go back to slavery, making bricks, working for Pharaoh. And God said, if that's what you want, I'll put you back in the desert and just let you die. And that's what happened. What do you want for Franklin and Baptist Church? You want to move forward? You want to go backwards? I vote moving forward. And I hope you do too. Let's pray together. Lord, Lord, thank you. Help us to move forward. We want to round them up. Those who aren't here, we want to round them up. We want to move them out. Move forward. Keep going. Do the things that need to be done here. We thank you for the many children that are coming. And Lord, we want the mamas and daddies coming too. And we want to move forward and keep these things rolling so that we can teach people about Jesus Christ. Help us to do that, Lord, and uh, give us a heart for people. Give us a heart for ministry. And there's one this morning that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I pray that they'd come today and give their heart and life to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cameras are off. You need to come move a membership or just come pray or do whatever you need to do. You come forward.